What's up, what is this? Crypto Muscle. I'm going to do another YouTube video. So here we are, International Now, Worldwide Syndicated. This is where it's at. Crypto Muscle on the Crypto Muscle Network. I'm going to do another video. And here we are, I'm going to bring you guys the crypto news here. You're getting caught up on what's been going on the last few days in crypto news. Events, all the stuff that's going on, the haps and the craps is what I call it. And this is where it's at, Crypto Muscle Network. I like to give you platforms, shit, podcast, which I got in the background here. Um, I mean, Telegram chats. I mean, I do it all. And one thing I like to infuse in my content is I like doing news too. I like to talk about what's going on out there. It's not just platforms and stuff. You know, I, I got a lot more to offer. And that's where it's at. I'm, I'm entertainment. All right. This is what it's all about here. You're one stop shop for everything. All right. So let's just get to it. I'm trying to get caught up on some of the news here. So let's get to it here. Uh, the SEC proposed rules that could squeeze crypto platforms. Hmm. I'm going to dig into that one a little bit here. Let's see. Put the squeeze in crypto platforms, huh? Oh, man, you got to do Wall Street. Ah, screw that. So that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> uh, let me go here. Let me go here. And let me go here. Let me just close that one out. All right, so... Okay, and let's see here. This was just tweeted. Uh, June 1st, 2023, Hong Kong will officially make crypto purchase and sell trading fully legal for all its citizens. Wow, very interesting. Uh, it, it's weird, all right? So China, you know, how they've kept on doing this weird sort of ban on crypto. Uh, the thing about Hong Kong is that you got to go back in the history of Hong Kong, all right? So, Hong Kong was an area in China, right? Southeast Asia area there. And it got imperialized, right? You know, countries came in throughout Asia from, you know, powers, power countries of Europe. And so, you have like Portugal, you have uh, Britain, France, all came in. Uh, and imperialized Asian countries. All right, so fast forward to the future a little bit more throughout that time. Uh, Britain maintained a, a hold of Hong Kong up until around 1997. And then in 1997, they finally turned over after 50 years of having sort of this sort of, uh, it's like rule, it's like a rule or... I don't know, some sort of holding of China, of Hong Kong and handed it back over to China officially. It has ceremonies, all that stuff. So with that, and then what was also adopted was a, they called it a one country, two system rule. So, so China is one country, obviously, and two systems, right? So you have China, Chinese with the government, and Hong Kong has their own little government within um, the the province itself, where you still got to be acknowledging China as their motherland, right? So that's the history of all that stuff. So this whole Hong Kong thing, being able to purchase, sell, trading, all that stuff, is well within their own, I guess, jurisdiction that they can do that. You know, outside of this whole ban of China and crypto and all that stuff. So pretty fascinating that Hong Kong will do that. We'll see if China will try to put a squash on that. Um, you know, so there, there's your piece of history for you. By the way, I love history, though. So I've always been a history kind of person uh, growing up. And so besides that, stay tuned. I got some history storytelling to tell in a different video. All right, so let's see here. U.S. inflation barely fell in January, so it, w it was down to 6.4% by just 0.1% and many times worse than forecast of 6.2%. This is definitely a bearish signal, but markets are trying to remain optimistic for now. Maybe they are counting on the Fed's dovish comments as the regulators' representatives will share their views on the new stats today. They just want to write off this result to the changes in the methodology of inflation calculation. Whatever, right? So, they forecasted 6.2 for 
from 6.5 and it was actually 6.4 so it's still that's what they call bearish right it's been a bearish times regardless and I don't know why there's been a debate about is it is it, is it a bearish market are we in a uh, you know inflation mode or are we uh, you know having money trouble and all and all this stuff right and obviously everything's in trouble right now they're just really slow to report that they don't want to cause a panic is what it is uh, are we in a recession of course we've been in a recession for a long time most visited centralized exchange over the past 30 days on crypto rank obviously Binance is number one they're gonna always be that number one unless something happens to them but uh they're very interesting KuCoin on huh? second Hubie Bybit um wow very interesting Coinbase is up there Poloniex huh very interesting I never would have thought KuCoin would be up this high up in the ranks and all that so very interesting and I, I like buy a bit better than BitMEX, but yeah, I don't mess around with those centralized exchanges too much anyways. Uh, let's see here. Robert Kiyosaki, it's time to buy Bitcoin because everything will collapse. Yeah, yeah, the money system will eventually collapse. I don't know if it will be in our lifetime, but it will. I believe in the digital dollar and Bitcoin and all that stuff. That is the future, and we are scratching the surface of the future right now. Uh, shit, it only took me, what, like 10 years to finally discover Bitcoin. I, I wish I discovered Bitcoin when they first launched it uh, back then. I mean, I was kind of aware Bitcoin was around uh, like the early 20, you know, it was like 2012 when they made a big deal about Silk Road and the illegal you know, underground trades, black markets, and all that that was going on with Bitcoin at the time. That I knew about Bitcoin at that time, but I never really, it never really occurred to me that I could, you know, get into it at that time. But that would have been a cool time to get into it during that whole Silk Silk Road time and all that. And uh, man, it could have been, uh, you know, a lot more holding of Bitcoin. I mean, imagine buying Bitcoin at that time, I just kept on stacking it at the time, not knowing what the hell I'm doing with it. And then, then came in the boom, and I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> I cashed in big time. You know, that would have been nice. So it took Bitcoin six months to get to 1,000 users, uh, five years to find 1 million users today, 14 years for in, from inception, back in 08. Uh, it has 300 million users, 4% of the world, so... Still pretty small when you really think about it. 4%. At the current growth rate, 1 billion users will be hit in 3 years. That's 12% of the world. So, it's it's a slow catch. I mean, that's still pretty small when you think about it. 12%. So, we'll see. And Bitcoin's been going crazy these last few days. Very volatile. You know, up to 24 the other day. Uh, and then it's down... Let's see what kind of stable coins they keep the assets in. The SEC essentially destroyed BUSD in one day. The token is still trading. The binding is in place, but it has no future. Which stable coins are safe to keep money in? Wow. Damn, BUSD is in trouble then, huh? Better get that money out. Centralized. So, USDT launched in 2014 by Tether together with Bitfinex now has the largest capitalization among stable coins. Secured by cash and short-term bonds, secure loans and corporate bonds. All right. Um, uh, see, risk audited by a company not in the big four. So, uh, I have a lot of tether. I have a little bit of USDC, but I have a lot of tether though. Uh, let's see over here. Secured by U.S. short-term securities, risk under the U.S. jurisdiction could repeat the fate of USD. Oh man, USDC is in trouble then. Especially launched by Circle. There's a lot of questions on the circle right now, too. Uh, DAI is a Ethereum-based stablecoin with super securities whose issuance is controlled by the creator of the DAO, the DAO. You could print 100 DAI against the pledge of $150 in ETH. If the value of ETH falls below 100 the pledge is liquidated. And this way, the buying is maintained. DAIs are basically backed by USDC. If anything happens to USDC, it will affect DAI. Holy shit, man. So that's double the crashing, double the dipping of crashing here, USDC and DAI. 
Frax. Oh, man, I never even heard of Frax. It's collateralized by the USDC, and the collateral ratio depends on market price of Frax. If Frax trades above the dollar peg, the protocol reduces the Frax monetary collateralization by USDC. If it goes below a dollar, the protocol will increase the collateral ratio to prevent a Terra USDC death spiral scenario. It is unclear how stablecoin will behave when scaled up. I wouldn't even trust this shit if it's partially stabilized that algorithmically. Screw that shit. In conclusion, USDT, USDC, and DAI can be held for diversification. Let's see how the new AVE and curve finance stable coins behave, but in the current situation, it is better not to experiment with new stable coins. Oh, very interesting. I do have both. Most of my stuff is in USDT. So, and I know, and I know there's been a lot of questions about USDT too, and how safe is that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It seems to be the safest right now, but hey, what do I know, right? I'm just telling you what I have, and what I've been seeing, what I've been hearing, and um, you know, all we could do is just, hey, hopefully it doesn't go away, right? So, uh, here's something funny. Kiyosaki promises Bitcoin at 500000 in 2025, so that's only a couple years away. In his opinion, the U.S. is in for a new depression because billions of counterfeit Fed money, and when everything collapses, gold, silver, and Bitcoin would be on the trend. All right, we'll see about that. That's all I got to say. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we know about the U.S. inflation. Binance says chat GPT helps benefit crypto adoption and education. Uh, judge bans Sam Bankman free from using VPNs while out on bail. So that means they don't want him hiding and communicating and doing some shady stuff. Because that's what the VPN is, right? It hides your location. Former FTX executives charity generated 150 million in profits from insider trading. Ooh, that's some big time trouble there. Ripple donates 1 million to the XRP in XRP to support victims of the Turkey Syria earthquake. They had a huge earthquake, and um, lots of stuff going on in terms of help, donations, and crypto, and everything else. So, pretty cool to see. Interactive Brokers launches Bitcoin and Ethereum trading to 8 million people in Hong Kong. Uh, there he goes. More Hong Kong action. Kansas orders $100 limit for individual crypto donations to political campaigns. Ah, because they saw what happened with that Sam Bankman Free when he donated tons of money to politicians and campaigns and all that. So Kansas puts a kibosh on that. Binance launches MasterCard debit card in Brazil. Uh, Sam Bankman Free's $250 million bail was funded by uh, former dean of Stanford Law School, Larry Kramer, and Stanford research scientist, Andreas uh, Pape, Papeke. Uh, let's see, $24,000 Bitcoin, we saw that. Uh, let's see, U.S. House Judiciary subpoena CEOs of Apple, Amazon, Meta, Google, and Microsoft for collusion with government to suppress free speech. Uh Wyoming lawmakers passed a bill that prevents individuals from being forced to disclose their private keys in court. Wow, I didn't know they make you do that in court. That's crazy if they do. Good for Wyoming uh, for doing that. I, mean, I didn't know they make you do that. That's crazy because that, anybody could take that down and take it home and then they got you. So, 25,000 break Bitcoin. All right. Oh, this is good news right here. YouTube CEO Susan Wachitsky uh, steps down after nine years. Hopefully, it'll open up YouTube a little bit more because sometimes they're a little bit tight on the things that they do. And they got to, you know, lighten up and open up a little bit here. So, U.S. judge. Yeah, so hopefully this would be good things to come. Uh, <laughs> U.S. judge to revoke Sam Bigman Free's 250 million bill unless he agrees to severe restrictions on internet use. That's going back to that VPN thing I told you guys about. SEC charges Terra founder Do Kwan for fraud. So SEC is getting them now. Man, Do Kwan's in trouble. Japan to launch digital yen pilot in April. All right, see, everybody's going digital. Bitcoin is the future. Last of the latest in crypto news. 
Comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.